Hair problem. I'm 22 and suffer from baldness. How can I regrow my hair? I'm 22. I have baldness. How to address baldness and regrow my hair? My father has no baldness. Thank you for your question. You submitted your question with several photos and you state in your question that you're 22 years old and you want to know how to regrow your hair and you, you're stating also that your father has no hair loss and so it seems that you're a little bit uh, wondering why um, you do and you're asking again about how to regrow your hair. Well, I can certainly share with you my treatment strategy in my practice. Um, a little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. Hair loss treatment has been a big part of my practice. In fact, I'm the founder of Trichostem Hair Regeneration Centers, a system we developed to help people with male and female pattern hair loss using a technology uh, combining platelet-rich plasma and acellular matrix. And we've been doing this for the past seven, eight years and helping people from all over the world and certainly have derived a lot of knowledge in helping under, uh, a strategy, provide strategies to um, patients who come to us for similar situations like yours. So to begin with, it's very important to understand the, the genetics of hair loss and why it's uh, often bewildering uh, for a lot of people to, who come in and say that no one else in their family has hair loss. Why are they the one who has hair loss? And the reality is, is that the, it is a genetic roll of the dice and it is hardwired in your DNA to have the process that you are experiencing. So what do we do to help people with hair loss? Well, to begin with, it's important to understand that no one is being cured that whatever treatment strategy there is, whether it's pharmaceuticals, regenerative medicine, or hair transplant, it is managing hair loss. So what I as a physician have to do, work with my patients on is an optimal treatment strategy. So when a patient like yours comes in and has such an aggressive hair loss pattern, and I essentially, I define almost anyone who starts losing hair in their early 20s, and in specifically someone who has lost as much hair as you have. Patients have come in who have started losing hair when they were 15, 16 years old, and it's genetics. So when we think of hair loss from that perspective, you have to understand further that hair that is lost most of it cannot come back. When it's lost, it really is lost. It's, there's a common misconception that hair follicles are potentially always there that will, can be reactivated. But that's not the case. It is, there's a distinction between terminal hairs, which are the hairs that grow to length, that provide coverage, and vellus hairs. And vellus hairs are fine hairs that are throughout the body but never grow beyond two millimeters and are really imperceptible. So when someone has hair loss, what is happening is the antigen phase, the growth cycle, the active growth phase gets shorter. Resting phase gets longer. Now in men, it has been well understood that one variable that has an impact on hair growth when there is male pattern hair loss is something called dihydrotestosterone or DHT. D DHT blocking with a drug like finasteride I feel is important in helping a, particularly a younger person manage hair loss. DHT sensitivity is something that I have essentially created a, an algorithm of when I look at a patient such as yourself and I would think of someone like you as having high DHT sensitivity. It doesn't mean that you have high DHT, but it may mean that your hair follicles 
are highly sensitive to the effects of DHT. So generally speaking, I recommend a DHT blocker. Now, of course, thanks to a certain um, issue with uh, the labeling of finasteride, a lot of people have been uh, influenced by the activity on the internet of the perception of finasteride being a very harmful drug. I would say that as a clinical doctor prescribing this drug since 1997, since it was on the, it entered the market and my colleagues all over the world, we still prescribe this drug. And we of course inform our patients of the relative risks, but I would say the risks are relatively low. But of course, a lot of younger men are, come to our practice are, are concerned about sexual side effects. But I would say that it is still important for you to consider a DHT blocker as part of your treatment strategy. Now, in our practice, we've developed a treatment called hair regeneration. As I described earlier, we essentially developed this from the intention to help patients who we were doing hair transplant for. And basically, we wanted to see the hair grafts as well as the donor area heal better. Well, a fortunate side effect was that thinning hair became thicker. And from that, we derived and developed a system of dosing and methods and a whole algorithm for both men and women with genetic pattern hair loss. And so with that comes a treatment plan based on the predictability of an individual's profile. And that profile is a combination of different variables including gender, age, age of onset of hair loss, rate of progression, degree of progression, other medical issues, as well as other variables that can be influencing the hair loss, such as hormonal issues. So a strategy that I would typically approach would be, we'd use would be using a DHT blocker like finasteride to slow down your hair loss progression. And we would use a treatment like hair regeneration to stimulate hair growth. Essentially, it's important for you to understand that hair loss is treated and managed. It's not cured. It's it, eventually the progression will march on. But if you want to try to maximize scalp coverage, well, my, in my opinion, the approach is optimal to reduce the effect of DHT while stimulating the growth of hair with this treatment. And we've had many examples of, our, of patients who came to us who were already on finasteride, but were still progressing. And when we did a treatment, our treatment, their hair got thicker. So we were able to make that distinction that the finasteride can help prolong the lifespan of the hair, while hair regeneration from a different mechanism can stimulate regrowth, strengthen the hair, as well as increase the lifespan as well. And this has been well recognized in the medical literature when it comes to PRP as the effect on the antigen phase of the hair growth cycle. So in that combination approach can probably help you maximize coverage for as long as is possible for you. I always explain to my younger patients who have the aggressive hair loss is that essentially we have to observe and see how much of a benefit we can get. But when I provide a patient with a treatment plan, it's with this understanding that we want to use every tool we can to essentially work around the genetic the predetermined plan to extend the lifespan of the hair for as long as is possible. So meet with doctors who can assist you with this plan, with this type of planning. I would say that it is a little too early for you to get a hair transplant given how aggressive the hair loss is. It's a separate topic, but I would say that first, medical management to optimally maximize stability before considering anything else that is more on a surgical side. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.